two, one. Oh. All right. Let's rock and roll. It's been an exciting week here. It's the weekend again. It is. Man. What are Saturdays for? Saturdays are for the weekly charts. You know you're a chart geek when... <laughs> when your buddy buys you a t-shirt that says, hey, Saturdays for the weekly charts. Yeah, we're geeking that out over here. It is the truth. All right. So... What do you got for us, man? I thought I was going to go in a different direction this week, but... Wow. GameStop. Oh. GameStop kind of put the stop on that. So we are going to talk a little bit about GameStop and uh, not too much into the gory details about GameStop in particular. But every, there's a, there was a lot of comments on Facebook and stuff about what exactly, what does it mean to borrow a stock? What is it to sell a stock short? Like it's, it's tricky because it, uh, most people don't do it. Right, um, and so we're just gonna. It's uh, definitely an investment product that the average investor doesn't run into, and, right. and you say that, but it, now it's available to the average investor, so it's a little bit why we're talking about it. Right. And if you're watching this and you're like, "What the hell does this have to do with the TSP?" Well, very little actually. Very little to do with the TSP, right. but it has a lot to do with educating yourself about the market as yep. a whole. And why is it that we only focus on? retirement accounts and a certain part of the market and it, it, the the reason we're talking about this other subject is so you can understand better why we don't do deal it. with that we stuff don't, no <laughs> why we don't mess with that stuff no. it's interesting and it's fun and you know if if you're uh at home in your underwear because you're on quarantine and <laughs> uh, you want to get on robin hood and play it's, which is really it's why a lot cool. of people are doing this yeah because yeah. they're stuck they at home and, and yeah. money so uh but yeah we're, we're gonna we're going to talk about that and, uh, you know, we'll have the, the regular charts that we do. And I'm going to answer a couple of questions that we got on Facebook and the social book media of faces. Stuff, yeah. I'll be okay. back on Fashe book next week. I saw, I saw you poked your head back up there a little bit. First, yeah. First well, I have to get on because we, we advertise on there Yeah. and then I get off as quick as I can. Yeah. I don't blame you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So the, uh, the sentence or the, uh, yeah, sentence game for the stock. day. Game, game stock. <laughs> I like that. Right? Okay. So this is a really good article. Um, I don't have the link to it, but you can go to it and check it out. Uh, Derek Thompson is a staff writer for Atlantic Magazine. Came out online. I saw it on January 28th. So if you want it in one sentence, I guess it goes something like this. The GameStop saga is a ludicrous stock mania born of uh, pandemic boredom and FOMO. FOMO is fear of missing out. Mm. Piggybacking off of a clever Reddit revenge plot, which targeted hedge funds who make who made a reckless bet on the struggling retailer, meaning Game, GameStop, uh, and it's going to end with a lot of people losing incredible amounts of money. So you could s have said the same thing about the the tulip bubble in sixteen whatever it was in Amsterdam. Um, the tulip bubble. Yeah, I, that I was like that. Yeah, yeah that, that's that's. That wasn't there. It, we there. Yeah, <laughs> it's really interesting because um, it was almost the exact same kind of thing. Um, it just got bid up and up and up and up, and eventually it all came crashing down. So, um, a lot of people right now think they made a lot of money on this, and uh, uh, we're going to look at a chart of it because you know a lot of people now are saying, "Hey, well, it's it's exploding," and and it's only happened in the last five days. Mm -hmm. So not so. You know, if you're if you're really paying attention to financial news, um, you you might have heard about it three days ago. If you're just uh, an average person, right? You if you get your stuff off the Today Show, yeah, you, you it's on the it's on the Today Show right today or yesterday. Days ago. Yeah, 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 and and we'll see where that was on the chart, and then okay, so now it's the weekend, and now a lot of people it's it's settling in. Does it make sense to buy it, um, or if you own it, does it make sense to sell it? And of course, it, there's Elliott wave pattern there, and we'll we'll take a look at it. Yay. All right. Yay, Ella, wave. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, lots of volatility this week. Oh, and, and, of course, the overall market, which is actually what we're doing here, yeah. is the TSP stuff, right? So, we'll, we'll, we'll do the GameStop thing, but really, uh, you know, there was a lot of volatility on the market this week. Um, and if you're a member had, of the site? Yeah. If you're a member of the site, you got an alert back on Monday morning, maybe? Oh, I forgot. It was, it was early. Yeah, it was early, early in the week. Um, and it's funny because... Last week, we were talking about how um, if, if we may be at a top, don't know, but we don't, won't know it until it, it rolls over, until it happens. Well, yeah. it, it happened on Monday. <laughs> yeah. But, I mean, who, you know, 
how, how are you going to know? So we're going to, we're going to get into all that actually at the end. So the first thing we're going to do is look at selling stocks short, right? What does it actually mean? And what happened with GameStop? And there are other com- uh, companies that um, the Reddit group is also going after AMC is, uh, is it American movie cinema, I think. And, uh, and some other companies, and we'll, we'll kind of talk about that a little bit. And then we get the the current Elliott Wave count, because um, there was one comment on Facebook about, hey, um, have we topped out, and now are we going, are we going to do an ABC correction? And uh, it that question depends on the time frame you're looking at. So, and, and the, actually the same guy asked, do I look at weekly charts or daily charts to make these decisions? And so... Yeah, it, it, it's both. Yeah, right? it's both. both. So if you if you go back to 2009 and, and have that as your starting point, you're using weekly charts. If you go back to November, which was our, our last most recent low, or end of October, um, then you're using daily charts. So we'll take a look. And then we get the regular six-month charts, or six, yeah, six-month daily charts. Okay. So what does it mean to sell a stock short? Okay. You come across a company that you think is going down in price. So in this case, um, uh, GME uh, GameStop, GME is the ticker symbol for GameStop. Hedge funds, smart money people, uh, they look at that and they say, okay, uh, GameStop is in malls. Um, they, it's, it's retail, retail brick and mortar malls. And we all know that retail brick, brick and mortar malls have been on the decline for, for years, right? then you have a company whose whole business model is based on people walking into the store um, and playing the games and buying them. Think about Blockbuster, right? I mean, yeah, it's, it's like it's shorting it's Blockbuster. Same, yeah. It's the same kind of idea. So, um, actually, I'm going to get to that part later. Let me just do the, the general, what is, what is selling a stock, stock short? So you come across a company, XYZ. You think the price is going to go down for whatever reason, right? So you call Fidelity or whoever your broker is, um, and you borrow 100 shares, okay, 100 shares of XYZ, where each share is worth ten dollars when you buy it, okay, but you, you, when you borrow it, sorry, you're borrowing the shares from the broker. You immediately turn around and sell those shares on the market for the same ten dollars that they were that they were worth when you borrowed them, okay. So since you sold them, right now you have a thousand dollars in your pocket, okay. But you owe a hundred shares at some point of X Y Z back to the broker, okay. Relatively simple. So let's say XYZ drops to $5 a share, right, over the next week or so. So you decide to what's called cover your short. So you have $1,000 in your pocket. You go back into the market and you buy 100 shares of XYZ. But since the price had gone down to $5, those 100 shares only cost you $500, right? So you take the 100 shares that you just bought, you give them back to the broker, and now you have $500 in your pocket, right? That's how you make money selling short. And that's your profit. Yeah, 500 bucks. Yep. Congratulations, you still have $500 in your pocket. Right? That's what, that is the basic, basic idea behind selling a stock short. Okay? Because you, you're betting on the fact that it's going to go down. Yes. You that's the whole it. idea. And you, 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 there's another version of this where you bet it goes up. That's the same thing, but it's yeah. not, yeah. That's just when you buy a stock, right? right. If you buy a stock, you, you buy a uh, but most people wouldn't think, oh, I'm betting on it going down. That's why a lot of people can't wrap their head around this because why would I buy a stock that I know is going to go down? Right. You're not buying a stock that you're, exactly. you're, you're, you're borrowing it. Yeah. Yeah. So borrowing it just long enough for it to go down. Yeah. And then give, and then returning the shares. Yeah. So it's not about the dollar value, really. It's, it's about that you borrowed X number of shares and you need to return X number of shares. Yeah. It's not about right. how much money. Right. It's about the it's about number the of shares. shares. So now the, so that's the, that's how you make money selling stocks short, okay? Which is what the hedge funds were doing with GameStop. Yes. They cuz they were they were betting that the, that it was going to go short, right? So, what happens <laughs> if the bad news it, it is the bad news, right? What happens if you borrow those 100 shares of XYZ, okay? And the price goes up on you. So, you, sell, you sold the shares um, at the market for 10 bucks, right, when you borrow them. So you have that $1,000 in your pocket. If the price goes up to 15 a share over the next week, right, it would cost you $1,500 to buy back those 100 shares that you have to give back to the broker, mm-hmm. right? 
you only have $1,000 in your pocket. Yep. So you just <laughs> lost $500. So you just lost 500 bucks, right? So this is why it's, it's dangerous because the potential loss, when you, when, you buy a, when you take a short position, your potential loss is unlimited. Because if you don't cover if you don't cover that short, I mean it's it's Vegas, right? <laughs> right? If you don't cover that short and the mar- and, and your the price of your stock keeps going up, you are in big trouble. <laughs> so huge, huge, yeah. yeah. So the higher the price goes, right, the more it'll cost you to cover your short, um, and, and so that you can return the borrowed shares to the broker, right? So it can get so bad that it gets to be called a short squeeze. Mm-hmm. Okay, so what happens is. A couple of weeks ago, on this Reddit thread, uh, it was called Wall Street Bets. I don't even know if it's still up anymore. But these guys, they noticed that a hedge fund had taken a really big short position in GameStop, okay? Which is public information. You can, you can see that. Yeah, that's what I was going to ask. I mean, I was going to point that out, right? Is that, well, how did they know this? Well, because it's if research. You, yeah, if you're, if you're researching enough, you, you can see what these large, what, you know, what the big guys are doing. Yeah, absolutely. Because it's publicly, it's public information. It's public inf- information. Yeah, yep. absolutely. So they get on Reddit and they convince all their buddies uh, in this Reddit thread to, to join forces and, and buy as much game stocks, game stock, stock <laughs> as they could. So buying the stock itself makes the price go higher. That's how, the, that's how it works, that's right? That's how it works. So as the price starts going higher, the hedge fund, a, as we described in the last really basic example, the hedge, hedge fund starts losing money, right? And, and the more people that Reddit got to buy more shares, the price starts moving higher, okay? So that hedge fund starts, you know, they're, they're losing billions of dollars, right? So... The, their losses actually get up to more than the $13 billion that the whole hedge fund is worth. All their assets under management, because it, it's leveraged, right? It's huge leverage, because they were sure, it reasonably and, and understandably sure, that they had a really secure short position in GameStop, because there's no value <laughs> that, you know, the underlying reasons why GameStop s- stock... There was nothing to show, technical or fundamentally, yeah. either way, Nothing was showing that GameStop was going to rise. Correct. There was nothing, no indicators at all. So uh, the indicators were the opposite. Right. The indicators were that it was going to fall. Right. And the the, the hedge fund said, that's a sure sure bet. Right. And they took it. And so you you buy your $1,000 worth. Now you got $1,000 in your pocket. And the stock goes up to where it's, you know, this is keeps going and going and going. Tens of thousands. Yeah. And you've just got a grand in your pocket. And you're like, uh. Yeah. uh, Yeah. Now all of a sudden it's 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 higher than all the money you have in your whole account. Yes, that's what happened to them. That's what happened to them. And so you go you go bankrupt. So you you take all you you got to you take all the money you have in your in your all you you got to close out all your other uh, positions. You got to get as pull as much money together as you can so that you can go buy the shares in in GameStop because you have to because you because ha- you owe them at some point you have to give them those shares. Yeah, you owe them out. So that's what's called a short squeeze, right? Um, so now the hedge fund is declaring bankruptcy. And the Reddit thread people, right, are looking for their next target, basically. Um, the next hedge fund that has a, a, a really big uh, short position in, in some company that, that, that the Reddit people will be able to get their guys together and, and go buy, right? So this is the thing that, uh, I don't want to say it fires me up, but I, I'm, I'm, cu- I'm interested in this part of it. This is the stuff we talk about when we're not on the show. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> We got to start recording that. This is the PG version of the stuff we talk about (laughs) when I'm not on the show. So there, there are there are obviously other ways to look at this, but um, we tend to be disruptive on the show here, and so that's kind of my come from. But so all the big guys on Wall Street, right, and and the media now, and the government's kind of getting behind it because the SEC is already in this. But all the big guys on Wall Street are saying that the public joining together in this fashion should be illegal, but really. They just lost at their own game to the masses, okay? And the fine print down there, I, I did plagiarize this basically uh, off the internet, but it was a, it was a really good um, summary of, of what actually happened with GameStop. And, yeah, so uh, if, if you're watching this, whoever said that, and you yeah. want us to give you credit, just yeah, tell yeah. us who you are. Tell us who you are. We'll, yeah. put, it, we'll put it on the that, line. That is the problem yeah. with the internet. Sometimes it's like, I don't know who said that, so if yeah. you're going to quote them, you can't give them credit. Right, right. But, uh, but, but let's, let's read that sentence again if we can. All the big guys on Wall Street are saying that the public joining together in this fashion should be illegal. 
But really, they just lost at their own game to the masses. Absolutely. Which we could talk about this for a couple of hours. But, yep. you know, the, the takeaway here is, well, I, I don't know yeah. if that's, this is the takeaway. The, 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 the point of that really is, is that, you know, do, 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 we, do we agree, right? Do we agree that, because part of this, the, we, part of the argument that's going on on the government side, I, you know, as far as I can tell, I, I tend to agree with in, 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 in bigger you know, sure. kind of viewpoint, right? So from a macro view, we don't want volatility in a market because it scares investors. Yes. Across the board, right? So people that don't, you know, th- th- it just, it's, volatility is not good, right? So I kind of understand that come from, right? Right. From the regu- regulatory side and from the government side, but from the hedge funds, eh, sorry, buddy. Like this is you a know, trade. You 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 pulled the right. handle on the. I always forget what that's called. Slot I machine. Slot machine. Because <laughs> I don't gamble. I suck at it. Right. I deal with sure bets. But yeah, you pull the pull the handle on the. I always think it was the one handed bandit or whatever it is. One arm <laughs> yeah, bandit. One arm bandit. Yeah. yeah. Dude, the hedge fund pulled the pulled the hand. Yeah. They pulled the arm thing and boom. Nope. You got short squeeze. Yeah. That's what they did. And so you lost. You can't cry about it. No, no. And you shouldn't uh, be getting bailed out or, oh, or the rules the being part. changed or anything so to, to facilitate your being made whole. I mean, right. the, you screwed. If we screw up, we don't get bailed out. No. Right. If you, if you, if you buy a stock and, uh, you know, there's plenty, there's a whole penny stock um, yep. uh, market that you can do. If you, matter of fact, I bought U.S. Airways. Um, a long time ago, whenever it, I might get this backwards, but um, I think it was U.S. Airways at the time. I bought it for a dollar twenty-five, and uh, the company closed down over the weekend. And on Monday, it opened as U.S. Air, hmm. right? Fifty bucks a share, but but me and anybody else who bought it as U.S. Airways was wiped out. Yep. Right. And and there's it's no a different company. It's a different company. Yeah. It's the same people, same employees. Nothing changed. But on there's a different piece of paper. As the, uh, uh, what's it called? The shares? No. no. I'm trying to think of the, the the document that you make when you establish the company. Oh, an article, articles, articles of incorporation. Of incorporation yeah. yeah, different articles of incorporation. That that was it. It's it's and now it's fifty bucks a share. Yeah. I mean, I it was a huge. I didn't have that many shares. I mean, I had a few thousand dollars in there. Yeah. But I learned a lot from that. Yeah, right? that's a takeaway. And and I think you know it, it's going to be obvious. I guess I don't know if we're going to talk about it, but um, why we don't why we don't talk about and deal in these sorts of investment products. Like this yeah, isn't yeah. like we don't spend time on Robin hood. No. It's, it's an, I, 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 the funny thing is like, I appreciate the ability for the average investor to be able to get in the game. Yeah. But when you go into it, not knowing the bigger picture of, of what you know, we could go down the road yeah, yeah. of like, when you, when you bought all these shares of GameStop, did you have any consideration for the tax impact on yourself? Right. Yeah. So when you sell these, if you're allowed to, like, I don't even know if you're going to mention that where a few of these places said, no, we're not even going to yeah, let you trade for a minute. It yeah. They, they closed the trade, said, no, you can't sell GameStop yeah. because they're trying to stop the market uh, right. volatility. Right. But okay. So you sold it. What's, what are your tax implications? Like what's going to happen now? And how much money did you really make? You know, nobody's that's, talking that's why about they're that saying stuff. a lot of people are going to lose a lot of money. And it, it is, it is true. So there's a, there's a giant difference between philosophically, uh, the, the democratization of the market, mm-hmm. right? Um, because now we're letting individual investors do things that they were never able to do before because you used to have mm-hmm. to call your broker. Oh, this was you know, not possible. It was impossible 10 years ago. Impossible. Your, your broker's going to talk you out of it. Sure. And, and he had to go execute it. And right. by the time he, he executed it, you were way past the, right. the thing. Now you just pick up your phone and go bop. Yeah. And so actually, here's, here's a, this chart is GameStop. Um, seven days where each tick is 15 minutes. Okay. So this whole thing happened in, in the last seven days. And really, the, the run-up of the thing happened in, in five days. So... The, the, I have two charts of this, um, and I just wanted to point out that it basically uh, progresses in an Elliott Wave pattern, right? You got you got back here when nothing was going on, right? Then all of a sudden you get you get a little bump. Is your one, two, three, four, five, which gives you the, your first one, right? Then you get A, B, C is two. Right, then people see that 
when this low is higher than this low, it's game on if you're, if you're actually paying attention to the stock. And so it doesn't really matter if this is like a yearly chart or a 10 year chart or, a, you know, this is a, a one, this happened in one day. This, on January 25th, the one topped out, you had the ABC down to the two, and then you had the, the consolidation, and at the end of the day was the beginning of the, of the three leg run. Yeah, and you had no idea how far it was going to go up. Nope. You didn't know why. I mean, right. if you weren't aware of this whole right, right. thing, right. you don't know why. But if you're, for whatever reason, reason you're 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 tracking this stock on a chart on, a, on an intra intra day basis, right. a very tight. If you happen basis. to be tracking this, just yeah. like that chart is, you would go, hmm, might be a good time to yeah. get in. Yeah, you could see it. Yeah. You could definitely see it. So this this chart actually. So this is the other one other thing I wanted to kind of point out. This chart is what we usually look at where um, each horizontal line is they're even even by the numbers right so so you get 375 here it goes up 25 every every one of uh, the horizontal lines goes up by 25 dollars right on a on a percentage basis though the the difference between a hundred right a hundred and two hundred is a hundred percent move on your money right so so the chart gets to be a little bit skewed. So you, we use a logarithmic chart, okay? So that's what it looks like on a logarithmic chart. So while back here, this one, it, it doesn't look like it was that big of a deal because you get, then you get this huge, you know, three, three move into the five. But in reality, the one <laughs> actually had a bigger move than, than the rest of it on a percentage basis. So if you had gotten in back here at whatever it was, 50, say it was 30 bucks back here, I don't even know what, and you ran the thing up to, to 150, I mean, that, that one leg was a giant move on a, on a percentage basis, right? Uh, and the five on a percentage basis isn't that much. It's not that big of a move. But it looked like the biggest move like on the numbers wise, it was the biggest move, but um, you know it was bigger than the one. But on a percentage basis, it wasn't, and obviously the percentage basis is 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 how you make how you make money. So, could you use could you apply Elliott Wave in a very narrow um, you know way of looking at GameStop over the last five days? Yes, and just like the story we. Uh, talked about last week, the week before on, on Tesla, when, uh, you know, my buddy calls and says, hey, I own Tesla. Um, we back on the charter? But, okay. So I own, he, he basically, it was the same exact thing. He owned Tesla right there. And he said, should I, should I sell it? I said, absolutely not. Because I, I looked at it and I saw the one, two, three, four, that we're in the middle of the, of the fourth leg. I'm like, nope. Don't sell it. It's going to be over 500 by the, by the end of the year. It was over 500 by the end of the week. You can see this thing coming, right? And as easily as you can see, as surely as you can see that thing coming, you can see this one coming too, okay? And all this is happening intraday, right? Each one of these ticks, so this big move, move down right there, that was 15 minutes of time. Yeah, right. <laughs> I mean, anybody who's playing in this is insane, Right, <laughs> you can, yeah. you because you can't you can't hit the phone fast enough to figure out when you're at what price you're actually getting this thing at. Right, you know. Only reason I did this was was to show that basically Elliott Wave works whether you're very intra intraday or doing it over a ten year period. Yeah, I mean, really, the takeaway is 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 you can treat the stock market like Vegas. Mm -hmm. There's, I mean, I don't see anything wrong if you have a thousand dollars in your pocket. And you want to go to Vegas or ten thousand dollars, whatever your yeah, whatever your circumstances are. You want to go to Vegas and you want to play blackjack or you want to play poker. Yeah, well, go for it, right? You're 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 gambling. Yeah, nothing wrong with that. Yeah, there's nothing. At least ethically, I don't see any problem with gambling. Some no. some guys might or girls, whatever. But anyway, the point is that is what you're doing. If you get into this game that we're we're kind of projecting now, yeah. where we where you're talking about GameStop and AMC and all these things, you're you're gam you're in the gambling space, and it's not to say that you won't win. You might, 
But man, you know, your your risk level is off oh, yeah. the off charts. The charts. Yeah. So it's why we don't play in this space, right? <laughs> Even for fun, like, you know, every once in a while maybe, but it's like no, it's we're we're going to spend our effort in building a retirement, yep. you know, uh, account that's going to fund my retirement. Right. That's what we do. Right. Now, that's not to say that there's anything wrong with doing that other stuff. Yeah. It's just that we need everybody to understand that this is yeah. not what we do. I mean, the only reason we're talking about this is because GameStop was, it was the all over the, the news. Week. Like, that's the only reason we're, we're doing this. And we're an educational website, an educational service. Yeah. Right? And so if you don't know what, what uh, short selling is or a short squeeze, well, then, you know, get on Investopedia. Yeah. And it'll tell it you. Yeah. Or you can watch a little bit of this yeah. and, and get, you know, our version of it. But the takeaway is 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 understanding what things are. Because there's been very, very, there's been quite a few times in my growth as an investor where I've kind of gotten pulled to that idea of doing day trading. Because I believe in technical analysis, right? And as I learn more and more and more about technical analysis, I think to myself, well, if I can do it over the course of a month or, or six months or a year, let's shrink that down to a day and do it in the day. Yeah, but the volatility is, no pun intended, is off the charts. Right, right. Right? And so do you really want to play in that level of risk? If you do, great. Yeah. But yeah. if you don't, which I don't think it, most of us for our retirement, we don't want to play yeah, in that I, level of risk. Yeah, I would not risk. recommend it. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's not where you want to be. And that's why, you know, so many people like Warren Buffett and other people that we're always quoting, index funds, man, index yeah. funds, not not individual. Right, right. Volatility on individual stocks is how uh, hedge funds and, and, and day traders make money. Yeah. Um, but we, but they're we, gambling. It, they're, they're gambling, and that's, that's fine. It's their, it's their space. I mean, we, we always talk about how there's, there's a whole bunch of different ways to play the game. Um, that is not a game you, you can really play as, a, as a, uh, someone who's investing for retirement. Um, and specifically, obviously, for TSP, because we only have three you know, stock funds and a bond fund. But even more importantly, you have to have your trade in by noon to get that day's closing yeah, price. You get no two way. trades a month. There's no way to do it. So only reason we did all this is to show that Elliott Wave still applies, and it was the news of the week. So <laughs> let's go back to bigger, better let's things. Go back to like you know, back to your your regularly scheduled. If you made program. money on GameStop, good on you. Yeah. If you oh okay, that's a good good point. If you if you own GameStop, if you own GameStop, and you're looking at you still you know intraday. Uh, you're playing with this. If you're lucky enough to be home because you're quarantined or whatever, <laughs> and you're actually doing this, um, if I owned this now and I was doing it, like I, I just drew, um, I drew these channel lines here, right? So I could buy GameStop at 325, where it is right now, expect it to run up to somewhere over 500 at the, at the you know, as it picked up the channel. And then if it if it broke below 275 here, I would sell it. So my risk, I would buy it at 325, sell it at 275, with the expectation of the gain to be up here over 500. So if you were, that's how you would, that's how you would trade it, because it's in this channel. Um, and if I was, you know, inclined to trade it, that's what I would do. And plus the uh, the prior high up here is right around 500. So you get a pretty good chance that this comes at least back up to the prior high. That's the technical analysis of the chart. Nothing to do with GameStop. It's just the analysis of the chart. Okay, so the question of, so now we're back to, to reality here, okay? We talked about... For uh, those of you that went to get coffee, now we're talking about TSP. Now we're back to, back to TSP, yeah. Um, we talked about do we use weekly charts or daily charts to do TSP, and the answer was both. Um, in this one, our most recent low is... Uh, that we're looking at here is March. Well, the most 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 recent low is uh, is the end of October, but the one before that uh, was the bottom here at the the coronavirus bottom. Okay, so we'll call that the bottom. I put this chart out a while ago. Um, you got one, two, three. ABC is four, five legs up, which gives us the one, right? Then we got A, B, C, which gives us the two. So when I when I drew out the channel lines, and I'm looking for the three, I'm looking for it to go something like this to a three. Right? It doesn't mean it's gonna, but that's that was my sort of bullish bias. I think I was talking about. So the fact that we have this stumble right here. 
Um, does that negate the pattern that we're in right now? And I'm going to say the answer is no. For me right now, for my risk tolerance and all that, I'm going to say the answer is no. Um, In the in the, the long term, you know, this year basically with with March as the low. In the long term, I think the pattern is still good. Uh, and so, if we drill it down a little bit tighter, um, what I would be looking at is if the price gets because right now we're up there at uh, thirty seven. This is thirty seven hundred. This line right here. This is 3,600, is this top. From an Elliott Wave perspective, if we got down here below this channel line and down here below 3,600, we were, we were below the one, then the pattern, then it's a different pattern, okay? So if we got to that point, yeah, then this pattern is definitely uh, failed. But we're not there yet. On the other hand, I don't, I don't want to, you know, if, you, if you're a, a subscriber to the site, you got the alert, go to the G Fund, we're going to talk about that, where that happened and why. But uh, I wouldn't want to take the loss all the way down to here. Uh, I just wouldn't. And I didn't. But the big pattern I still don't think is... I haven't given up on it completely yet. Okay. I put this one up just to show um, sort of the, the support and resistance and and what it can really look like. Let's see if I can do this without drawing on it. So you see the, the dotted line that, that goes down. It closed like just barely right at 3,100, uh, right on the, at the time what the 10-day moving average line was, right? The next day, market comes down and reverses. The day after that, it went up and reversed. So it's staying right on that blue line, on the 10-day moving average line. And then if you go count back one, two, three days, that, the first big down day, right? Gap down through the 10-day moving average. Uh, intraday, it went a little bit lower than the 50-day, but closed right on that 50-day, right? That was on Wednesday. Then on Thursday, the market rebounds, gets back just barely above the 10-day, and then came all the way back down. Um, it closed higher for the day, but uh, and it closed above the 50-day moving average, but it closed below the um, it closed on the on the lower side of the of the day's trading range, and then on Friday it closed down uh, right pretty well below the 50-day moving average. So the interesting thing is, on Wednesday it came down and found support at the 50-day. On Thursday it went back up and hit resistance on the 10-day, and then on Friday came back down and gapped down again, closed below the 50-day. So you can kind of see here how the how the moving averages uh, provide support and resistance. That was the that was really the point of that. The other part of it is when the price topped out, the volume on that day was a big volume down day, and 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 the negative volume had just increased over over the course of the next several days. RSI had already started to turn, to turn, right? And we had the cross of the MACD right there and the cross of the uh, histogram right there. So everything lined up on that day. And that, was the, that was the Dow Jones Industrial Average. So if we had been watching the Dow, which unfortunately in this case for us, the Dow is not part of the TSP funds. Um, if you had been watching it, you could have reasonably gotten out before the Wednesday uh, drop. You absolutely could have gotten out at the end of last week, like right there. But it's not part of the, the TSP portfolio, so we didn't do that. So this is the C fund, and you can, you can tell, the um, as, as opposed to the Dow, we had the, um, the RSI still, you know, at high, and the MACD hadn't crossed. Nothing happened until that this one big down day. 
So the Dow led it. The Dow Jones Industrial Average was it was like a leading indicator for this. But on the C fund, you really you didn't see it until that one big day that it came down. So, but just like the uh, kind of like the Dow, the the big down day on Wednesday didn't go all the way down to the 50 day moving average on the S&P 500. Um, but Thursday it did recover back to the 10 day and then rolled, rolled back down. And then on Friday, uh, we had another 2% move down and we, we now do have support at the 50 day moving average. So on the one hand, I'm looking at it and I'm thinking, okay, I got support on the, on the 50 day moving average. So maybe I get support there and the market bounces is higher. Maybe, but we got some evidence that that's not going to happen because it, it didn't bounce higher on the on the Dow, right? So I would not be buying here because it, there's nothing that indicates that we're going to actually see support at that 50-day moving average. Okay. The S fund. Similar but different. We still got some room to go down because the S fund really isn't isn't anywhere near its 50-day moving average. So we we had the same sort of percentage gains and, and losses and things last week, and uh, but we got plenty of room for the for the uh, the S fund to to move lower. The indicators obviously have turned negative, but you got plenty of room for the RSI to, to get down here. Um, so I, I definitely I would not be I would not be jumping back in. Um, iFund actually looks the worst of all of them. I don't have the 50-day the up there on the iFund, but it's the, the iFund rolled over the hardest. Um, the only sort of positive on the iFund is that it's actually approaching, the RSI on the iFund is, is approaching a low, um, so it might actually be leading also, kind of like the Dow was. One, of the, one other thing we, we had talked about, um, Connor and I had talked about, if you... You know, people are always ha people are always talking about uh, the, the buy and hold and the the uh, actively managed and, and all that. If you got out on the alert that we put out at the beginning of the week, you locked in a two point four nine percent loss. If you had been in sync with us, okay. So you locked that loss in on Friday. There was another two percent loss from from where it was on at the close on Thursday, right? So, if if now you go back in on Monday and buy it back, and let's say let's say the market's flat on Monday, say it doesn't do anything, it's flat. You buy it back at the same price that it closed on on Friday. You would now be two percent to the positive, essentially, right? So if you just did the buy and hold for the rest of the year, you and, and say you just did the C fund. This is S&P 500, right? You basically have 2% in the bank. <laughs> so now if you just bought the, C, the, bought the C fund for the rest of the year, you would finish 2% higher. This is theoretically, so don't get, quote me on that. <laughs> right, right, right. But you would finish 2% higher than the S&P fund did. Now the S&P might be negative for the, for the year by the end of the year, but you would be less negative than, <laughs> than the C right, fund, right? right. Um, You're going to be beating it by 2%. Yeah. Yeah. So that's, and, and it, it also... Um, the the rest of that right is why we why we don't do that. So the yep. the conversation was basically like this: like Jerry calls and says, "Hey, you know, if I did this on Monday, you know, next Monday, whatever, if I did this, yep. like it would lock us in. You could make the argument like we're beating the the S and P the rest of the year, yep. right? Which you are technically. So that's how buy and hold can work. The the, the sure. problem with that is is you're leaving a lot of opportunity on the table the rest of the year. Yep. Where you might beat it by more, sure, a lot more. Yeah, I mean, if this, if if uh, so, we we just said I, I wouldn't buy the C fund here because I saw that the Dow already is below its fifty day moving average, right? So uh, I don't have a, a weekly chart to pull up, but if you if you looked at it, um, if if the C fund does get below the fifty day, it probably goes down to the two hundred day. Maybe I would buy it at the two hundred day because now we're ten percent probably at least. Um, off of the high. So if you bought it there, or at least eased yourself back in at that point, um, you know, now you're, you've got a lot of leeway, right? Because you've saved, say, a 10% move. And now if you got back in and did the buy and hold for the rest of the year, now you're up 10% for the year. That's pretty good. Yep. 
And uh, you're not up ten percent for the year. You're up ten percent of whatever the C fund. Of comes whatever in the right? market, yeah. yeah, the the C fund is. So people are always asking us about our performance, and we are still working on the performance page. We are going to have it up. Uh, the reason I bring it up right now is because one of the things that we'll be showing is this risk-adjusted return, yep. which plays into that whole description you just talked about, where um, the the sharp ratio will show that you might have gotten on, you know, you, your return might show, you know, your return might be higher than mine. Right. But if my sharp ratio is higher, that means I introduced less risk right. into the whole equation to get the return, to get the return yeah. I got, which means I sleep better at night. Yes, definitely. Right? Because it's not all over the place. So the the takeaway is you want to have a high sharp ratio or there, there's other uh, indicators you can use or measurement tools, performance measures, but the, the, the one that most people uh, use is sharp ratio. Yep. And it basically takes your return and introduces the risk, yep. right? And so those are the things that we'll be showing on our performance page. It would be easy. The easy way out for us, honestly, would just be to put our pip up there and and just roll on, yep. right? But as as you all as as you all are uh, members of the site longer and longer and longer, we are hopefully going to educate you in uh, in, in in performance. And the pip is not necessarily apples to apples. My pip and your pip and this person's pip. If we put them all in, it, it doesn't. It, it's not yeah, apples wait, and apples. Right. The interesting thing is, I think the if you look at the TSP um, performance page on the on the TSP site. It talks about rate of return. Not PIP. Not PIP. Yeah. Not at all. The, the L only, fund doesn't have a PIP. The C right. fund doesn't not, have a PIP. No, it doesn't, right? And if you, if, you know, you have the daily share price, you can see on the, on the site. Um, and, you know, it's just an Excel spreadsheet working behind the scenes there or, or uh, to, to, to come up with the, the numbers, but the, to come up with the rate of return. Uh, but it's not, a, it's not a PIP. A PIP is a different thing. It's it, a weighted it, yeah, rate of return. it's a weighted rate of return. It depends on cash flow going, coming in and out of your personal account. So it's it's important only because they they created this thing called the PIP so that we could we could say it's our personal performance measure, right. and it is. It's just that it's not valuable, really. <laughs> what's what's what matters is your rate of return. It does, and it's it's valuable to you as a person, right? Yeah, yeah. So it because it cause, because it's weighted in a way of 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 showing your cash flow, right? So as a person. It means something to me. Yes. Right. It t- shows. It can. Get, it gives. It gives me a tool, an indicator, to, to tell how well I'm doing. Yeah. You cannot take my pip and compare it to your pip. Yeah. Because then ours are weighted differently because of the. Sure. I took out a loan. Yeah. You, you, yeah. It's it's all, all different. Things, yeah. Rate of return doesn't change though. Yes. Right. Rate of return rate is rate of return. Is return. Yeah. And also taking the rate of return and making it a risk adjusted return. Right. Yeah. That using, doesn't change either. Yeah. yeah. And and so. Not, not to get too much in the weeds, but the point is here is so that a lot of the people, particularly people that aren't members yet, this is really where we get a lot. Yeah. Well, show us, you know, your last five years, three years, whatever, right, your performance. Right. And we are, we are going to do that. The, the hard part is, is kind of projecting that in a way uh, that tells the full story, yeah. right? Because we're, we're having to put together all this software to kind of do that so that, because our, our intent is to be as transparent as possible. Yeah, oh yeah. Because if you it, and 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 the reason we're so happy to do that is because we are performing well. Yeah, it works. Yeah, but the the easy way out, which would be to take a pip, that just it would be disingenuous, right, to do yeah. that. It it would not be transparent to just put our pip up there because then it's like, oh, these guys are doing great. Yeah, it's but it's not telling the full story. Yeah. So we want to tell you the full story, and you can see why we're doing great. Because mostly the reason we're doing great is because we manage risk completely different. Right. Than most people would, right? And so, rule number one: don't lose, don't money. lose money. Right, and and you have to be in the stock funds, or else your account doesn't grow. It, it's not hard. It's, it, no. it's it's not complicated, but it's uh you know it's hard to execute. Yeah, the hardest thing to do is to stay consistent. Yeah. All right. Let me see if I have anything. We did the S fund. We did the I fund. Questions. Damn questions. That's it. Questions are when you're going to get this performance page up. That's a good question. That is a good question. It's as soon as as soon as Connor can get it done. <laughs> yeah, I, I, trust me, folks. Uh, there was two two big things to get out this the beginning of this year. One was a better support mechanism because as we grow with members, you know, it's, it's with any place, any website, particularly, you know, you're gonna have issues. You're gonna have administrative things. You can deal with whatever. So we're trying to make the support better. I think we've we're, we're we've taken that first step. We've created the support center. 
Uh, we'll keep adding to it. We'll keep making it better. And hopefully any problems or issues you come across, you'll be able to solve them yourself. And if you can't, then, you know, a support person will. Um, solve next, the problem. Yeah. Yep. The, so they'll be able to solve the problem. The The next issue is kind of be projecting this this kind of performance uh, piece. And it's very important to us to get this out because it won't just be, you know, one, one performance measure. We want to give you guys enough of a, of a, of a, of an insight into the performance where you can make your your decision. You're going to be able to see it because if you look, if you're familiar at all with the, with the TSP site, uh, the performance page on the TSP, it, it shows you both the numbers and, and a chart. And so the volatility of the CSI funds the L funds also, they compare against each other. We're going to have our, uh, a our chart of our performance overlaid on, on the L funds and the, and the, yeah, and the, and the funny funds. thing is we're going to be using the exact same software they do. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it took us a while to, to dig into that, to get that, but that's, that's basically what we, we, we we've decided on is the exact same software they, that the TSP.gov uses to project all of this, right? Cause they just draw it from tables, just like, it, you know, yep. to make these charts, we're going to use the same ones. That way, when you're looking at ours, you feel comfortable that, okay, well, it, it looks going to look just like theirs. Yeah, it's, it's gonna, we're using the same data. Obviously. Exactly the same data. Cause yeah. we're pulling it from the TSP site yeah. and then pulling it from, from, from our performance. So hopefully, you know, knock on wood, I don't even know if this is real wood, uh, Within the next 30 days or so, we'll have at least a the first iteration of our performance page, and and it'll. So I, I'm bringing all this up just because it's a question we get a lot, yep, yep. and I don't want you guys to think we're ignoring it because we're not. Uh, we just want to give you the right information because one of the things we kind of pride ourselves on, as this thing has grown over the years, is uh, our level of transparency. Because you know we're all government folks, we're all we're we're yep. we're, we're, we're military. What we're like, you know, we're we're we don't want BS, right? right? We got BS meters like no one has. Oh, yeah. And so our, our kind of way of dealing with that is like, Hey, let's just show you everything. And if you, if you, if you see everything and you've got the information, you can make a decision. Yeah. And that's at the end of the day, we are not managing your TSP accounts. We're, we're doing yeah. everything we can um, to, to show you what, a way of, of analyzing what's happening in the market. And if you, choose to get, you know come on board with this way of looking at it yeah, uh you this can, methodology you, you can really minimize minimize your your downside risk and, and maximize your upside yeah it's all about educate and validate right yep. we're trying our best to educate everyone so that they understand how we're doing this methodology if you buy into the methodology then you can use our movements as validation right yep. When Jerry, Jerry moves his money, I'm watching. Doesn't mean I'm going to make the same move all the time. No, nope. because my it, risk tolerance may be different. It's funny. It's, uh, somebody put up on Facebook. Uh, <laughs> every time the the price gets close to the 10 day moving average, my spidey senses tell me to look <laughs> at <laughs> to look at the website at 10 a.m. because I know it's coming. <laughs> like I I know by 10 there'll probably be an alert up there because because I do I post the. Uh, the actual new allocation before we are able to get all the stuff together to put out the text. And, yeah, and yeah, emails. we changed the website first just in case you come by. <laughs> yeah, that way yeah. you see it the the right information. Right, right. Uh, we change that first, and then we send out yeah. all the communication. I mean, obviously, this, the mechanics of the stuff t- 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 takes a little bit of time, and it's a little bit yeah. uh, manual. We're getting so, faster at it. Yeah, we're, we're definitely getting better at it. We can now we can do it on the phone. We've, we we can do all kinds of cool stuff. But there's a progression, right? I have to have the. Um, the new allocation up on the site so that Connie can grab it and put it in the emails and the text and all that. And so, uh, and then I come, come back later that night and I, I do up the, right up the, the alert, alert and yeah. Um, well soon you won't have to wait till the end of the night cause you won't be roaming around the world very soon. Yeah. We'll get the alert up quicker <laughs> cause I'm always anticipating the alert. Like, I, I mean, I, I kind of know an alert's coming like just like the other right. person's like, Oh yeah, we're dipping to 10 day. Yet. But what I really like is to kind of like, because once you get the actual written alert, and if you're a member of the site, if you're not a member of the site, what that means is like, you know, Jerry does um, a full blog post on why, right? Why, why the, why the change, yeah. why the allocation change, and more importantly, what to be looking for going forward. Because to me, that's the, to me, that's the bigger value, right? Okay, I, I kind of knew it was time to get out or in, mm. whichever. But the real value is, all right, now what are we looking for, right? right? Because you tell the rest of the story. Yeah. It's like, okay, here's where we're at now. Now this is what we need to be looking for 
to get back in or get back out wherever we're at, right? And so if you're if you're a member of the site, you get to see all that basically by the end of the day that we make these changes because yeah. we have to make them before noon. Yep. Yeah. Yep. We could just keep talking and talking about it, but we're no, at the end of the time. show. <laughs> it is lunchtime, and we're about to go have some wings. Yep. Or I'm going to have do wings. It. I don't know whether it is. Let's All right. It. Is it time to click out? All right. Let's do the music. Have a good Cue. week.